So we can parse reproduction and sex in biology. Reproduction is a matter of cells detaching and walking away. If you are a single-celled organism already and you undergo cellular division and the two cells walk away, that's reproduction. If you're a great big multicellular creature like us, then some very specialized cells, a few of them, detach and walk away. Again, making more individuals, so that's reproduction. Sex is a completely different phenomenon. In biology, sex means the combination of genetic material. So therefore, if two bacteria, single-celled organisms, were to wiggle up to one another and exchange some genetic information across the two of them, altering both of them, and then wiggle away, they've just had sex, but there hasn't been any reproduction. So in the case of one bacterium, two undergoes cell division, and then the two little cells wiggle away from each other, there hasn't been any sex at all, but there has been reproduction. Our situation is a matter of limiting all of these options. In our situation, we have uh, the production of specialized cells that will, in the fullness of time, be independent of us, but then they only develop into new individuals in the context of genetic combination. In fact, we even limit the genes of the cells that we produce in the context of their eventual combination with another one. So therefore, for us, we reproduce via sex in the genetic sense. So therefore, in ordinary conversation, saying sexual reproduction sounds redundant, whereas in biology, it's actually an extremely specific and careful combination of concepts. And that's actually kind of a big deal because here we're talking about how we project our own experience of life onto biology, onto nature, onto the cosmos. The idea that our anatomical act of combining the gametes is promoted into a matter of cosmic significance. It's a matter of personal significance. It is not, however, much when it comes to the diversity of biological function.